Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, I want to talk a little bit about part design. So for my drone channel, one of the things I'm getting into doing is flying 360 degree cameras on drones. Uh, and to do this, I need to make uh, I needed to make up some custom brackets. Get that out there, right? So uh, typically, it comes with this uh, this bracket I have for the back of my Mavic Pro. If I get it the right way, um, it comes with this GoPro mount. But one of the problems, by the time I stack everything on with this heavy 360 camera, it gets a little bit unwieldy. So I wanted to design up uh, a replacement bracket, and here it is. And I wanted to talk a little bit about this, about how quick you can do it. I'm going to show some stuff up in the corner. So what I did is, is again, I, I did this in Tinkercad, and a lot of you guys write, oh, and it's used Fusion 360. And the reason I don't is it takes too long. And so, actually, in the shorter time than it takes for me to make this video, I can actually make this part, and that's exactly what I did. Now, I'm not going to take you through all the boring step-by-step -step processes. I want to take you through the high levels. But really, this video is just kind of share what, again, you can do to create a part very quickly. Um, so, basically, what I did is I took this base bracket, and I scanned it on my scanner and took it in to Inkscape and traced the base out because I wanted to get all the holes. Now, I could have taken my calibers, measured this out, and did it in OpenSCAD or Fusion 360, but it was just quicker to scan it, import it in Inkscape, trace it, output the uh, uh, result, and it's an SVG file, import it into Tinkercad. And then once I imported it into Tinkercad, one of the things you might notice is I have a little bit of recess in here. So I wanted to replicate that recess also in this model. And the easiest way for me to do it was I created, and I'll have it up in the corner, um, actually two plates of this where I kept the original and then I knocked out just a little bit bigger hole around it and then layered the two on top of each other. And that's how this actually came to be. And then from there, what I did is I took and I measured this nylon bolt with a calibers. Whoops, if I don't drop my camera there, it's rather heavy. And then figured out how tall I wanted it, uh, because what I need to do is clear the distance inside here. So it actually goes down a little bit, so it tightens up against the camera. Uh, so I get a real secure fit. And then I just brought in a cylinder and actually just replicated that cylinder, scaling it down and then sticking it up and boom. I mean, literally, I don't even know if it took five minutes to design this part from scanning to importing to actually being able to have a model I could slice and output. And this is, again, one of the things I want to share with, with you guys is the ver the true versatility because it frustrates me a little bit uh, you know i still think 3d printing's got a lot of uh you know hey let's make this you know uh piece of game piece or something like this 3d printing is actually can be very practical now the other piece i did and i've covered this out in other episodes now i'm putting in this on a drone and flying this in the air and this is a rather heavy weight and i don't want it to come falling down so to create this piece i use the same methodology uh, is all top layers. So this is a solid piece of plastic. So this is a pretty solid um, uh, part, you know, so it's got really no infill. So its ability to break is pretty tough. And I used uh, some robust, you know, some enhanced PLA to print this out. So this is pretty strong and I want it to be rigid. I don't want it to flex. So that's why I avoided something like ABS and that. So this is pretty rigid. So Anyways, hopefully you found this interesting. You took a little inspiration away. The next time that you face a bit of a challenge and you feel like turning to 3D printing, you know, I highly suggest it. And just kind of think through your design a little bit. What is the fastest way? And once you get into the habit of this, uh, it, it happens pretty quickly. And again, it's pretty easy. And don't discount a Tinkercad for doing quick parts like this. Again, I use Fusion 360. I use uh, OpenSCAD. I use a lot of tools, but when I just want to get something done within a couple minutes i've got this part you can't complain about that so anyways hope you found it interesting if you did thumbs up swag shop up there and we'll see you in the next video when we make something else cheers please click like below and subscribe to the channel